going on, everyone? So Scream 6 did a lot of great things, right? The, the setting, uh, the tone, the way Ghostface went about. Uh, but with all of the pros, there were a lot of cons of Scream 6, right? A lot of people uh, felt that the writing was really lackluster in a lot of areas. Uh, they kind of just carbon copied Scream 2 to an extent. Yes, they switched things up, but the premise in a lot of ways was the same as Scream 2, and they're kind of following that pattern. There's even concerns that Scream 7, whenever we get Scream 7, will call, kind of follow that same suit. Uh, but regardless, whether you liked the movie, whether you hated the movie, uh, whether you were somewhere in between, there definitely was their flaws, right? There definitely was the issues. And the writing hasn't been great. Even in Scream 5, right? Scream 5, there was just a lot of lack of creativity in a lot of ways. Like, Scream 5 was, in many ways, a carbon copy version of 96. Again, they did some things different but a lot of it was just the same uh and then scream six they kind of in the same way just didn't have as much creativity as many people would have liked i had a real issue with it uh i before scream six even came out relayed that if these things happen i was gonna be disappointed and a lot of those things ended up happening and i was disappointed that doesn't mean i didn't like the movie overall that doesn't mean that I thought the movie was terrible or anything like that. I did enjoy the movie. I did think it was one of, uh, if not arguably, the best sequel in the franchise. Uh, I thought it was better than Scream 5. But again, the writing was very lackluster. And I really hope we get some creativity. Now, some of that could just be that they kind of handcuffed themselves to the past with Scream 5. I've talked about on numerous occasions that I really think that they should have started fresh and found a way, if you wanted the OG characters involved, kind of figured out a way to do so uh, without that. I think you could have done pretty much that entire movie without having everyone be, you know, bloodlines of the legacy characters and stuff. I just feel like, again, some of the writing was very lazy. And it looks like, based on some of the commentary, that I'm not alone in this sentiment. Uh, that uh, even one of the actresses felt that way about some of the writing. And this, I think, is pretty funny. So it's going around uh, that the Scream 6 commentary, the filmmakers said that Samara Weaving was looking embarrassed and annoyed during her phone call. Remember the scene, the beginning scene, um, where she's on the phone and she's making all the gestures and stuff and kind of cringe at, at herself in a lot of ways, uh, that... During that phone call, it was her real reaction to the written dialogue. That's not good, <laughs> right? Like, this, like, why would you even say that publicly? Like, why would you even put that out in the ether? Is something that I think is funny. Um, you know, because it just... It, it paints a bad light on something that many people have criticized Scream 6 for, right? That the writing wasn't what it should have been. A lot of the dialogue was just not there. And just some of the creativity. And I get that that's kind of what this scene is supposed to entail, right? The scene is supposed to be a little cringe, right? It's supposed to be a little like, uh, you know, she's she kind of isn't out there very much. And she's putting herself out there. And she's a little awkward. And, you know, just saying some silly stuff and things like that. And so it, it does fit what the character was supposed to be. And it does fit kind of her, her reactions, Samara Weaving's reactions fit what was said, right? And, and kind of portraying her character. But it's funny that this wasn't acting, it was the dialogue. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that it was a negative light, right? It doesn't necessarily, like, this doesn't mean that, like, Samara Weaving was like, oh, the writing's trash or anything like that. No, it's not what that means at all, right? She... Again, she understood, I'm sure, the character. I'm sure she understood the role that she was playing. I'm sure she understood and grasped what the writers were trying to get from her. But, oh, it did seem out of sorts for what is supposed to be this college professor that is, you know, an expert in horror films and stuff like that. And, again, I get that it's supposed to be this sort of meta thing, right? She knows all the tropes. She knows all of the the do's and don'ts when it comes to horror movies, especially uh, of the the Stab franchise with Ghostface and stuff, right? It's this, like, 
meta element moment where it's supposed to, as an audience, we're like, okay, well, she's the film student or she's the film professor, not even student. She's a film professor, so she's not going to make those mistakes. She's not going to make those flaws. And ultimately, she does, right? She ends up falling into the trap of like, oh, you know, going down the dark hallway or alleyway. And then you even have Ghostface who's like, you know, don't you know you're not supposed to go down the alleyway and all of that, right? You get that moment. And so, again, I, I don't necessarily think it's something that is just like, oh, trash or anything like that. But it is something noteworthy. One of the things that I will kind of applaud Scream 6 for, and there's a lot of things. Again, I enjoyed the movie. I just think that I would have liked a little more freshness, a little more creativity as far as like the overall main story, right? Did you really have to do the family tie-in again? Did you really have to do instead of the mother, it was the father, right? And then, you know, I, I liked the, the three killers. I liked the New York setting. I liked, I just think... You had all of the tools at your disposable for Scream 6 to just do something fresh, right? Here's a new fresh film with the returning surviving characters in New York. You know, you, you had all these different sets and all these different areas and stuff. One of the things that I was concerned about that, that happened in Scream 2 is that, you know, in Scream 2 you just had like the college campus, Right? But, like, they never left the college campus. And if any of you have ever gone to college, that, like, never happens. Unless you're, like, studying and you're in your dorm or you're sleeping or, like, you know, you're doing some, like, group or something, right? Like, you're almost never on campus. You're going here. You're going there. You're going to a local bar. You're going to a local hangout spot. You know, you're going to some party or you're part of some group or some program or something. You know, there's just, there's constantly things going on. And so I do like that they weren't just like on the college campus the entire film. So that was nice. Again, there was a lot to be excited about. I just thought that they had a real opportunity to go fresh and they just kind of did it. They kind of just tied it into Scream 2 once again. And my concern is Scream 3 is going to do the same thing. But it's just the reason I even want to talk about this is because it highlights the concern of like the lack of creative writing that we are seeing with this and now to be fair maybe the writers had or have had these great brilliant stories right maybe they've had these these ideas or whatever and the studio has shot it down that could be a possibility right like the studio grants and gives the okay and everything and you know changes what they want and does what they want so you know, how much of it is entirely on the writers, but it's just, you had this, many people's eyes, a, a lackluster story or overall story in Scream 5. Uh, even Sam, like, was hated by a large majority of the Scream, of Scream fandom, period, right? Scream 6, they did a much better job of writing her character, people kind of came around, people really like her now, but Scream 5, it just, it, it did a lot of, it didn't do a lot of justice for many of the characters, primarily the main f final girl that you're trying to build and continue your franchise on. But again, one thing I will give credit where credit is due is that Scream 6 took a lot of the criticisms that people had for Scream 5 and kind of changed it. Right? Like, one of the things that I was saying after Scream 5 was that, like, and even Scream 6, I, and I'm hoping they kind of do this for Scream 7, right? But basically, like, you know, I, I love that Scream 5 established a more modern version of Scream, right? The the pace, the tone, the, the darkness of Ghostface, the, the no-nonsense in a lot of ways, right? Ghostface was pretty brutal. That... I loved, and I wanted that to translate into Scream 6, and I wanted a more cleaner, just, flow of the overall story and what you were doing, and but keep and maintain the brutal, dark tones of Scream, or this new adaptation of Scream in Scream 6, and I felt like they did that in Scream 6. I just feel like, ideal, like, just kind of get back to basics a little bit, right? Like, Scream 7, keep the 
keep Ghostface the way he is. This darker, more brutal, not as clumsy and goofy as he's been in the past, right? Um, the pace and, and the move, right? Scream 5, the pace was almost too fast, right? You're just like trying to, like, it didn't allow things to marinate. And Scream 6, I thought, did a much better job of that. That's kind of what I meant by, like, you know, the the flow of things, right? It was just like, yeah, you had the, it's just, you have this one moment, boom, and then it's like, okay, let's move on. Like, Dewey dies, Dewey's, even Dewey's death, right? It's like, you didn't get a Sydney reaction. It's like, come on, you, you, you couldn't have taken 15 seconds or something like that to just give us a Sydney's original, uh, uh, you know, immediate reaction, Things like that, because they were just so, like, we need to pack this action. Boom, 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 boom. And it's like, we're okay. Like, the previous trilogy was relatively slow. Like, Scream 96 was is probably the best example, right? Of, like, as close to a perfect movie as there is. The character development was great. The pacing was great. You know, you, you, you always had stuff going on, even behind the scenes and the background and stuff, so there was always things to look out for, always things to keep you on your toes, but like, it wasn't like there was this ridiculous body count or anything like that, and then Scream 2, Scream 2 was very slow paced, right, there was a lot of like, just fill in time, right, like, even like the dancing cafeteria thing that everyone cringes at, like, you could have taken that whole thing out of the movie and cut like, what was it, four minutes or whatever it was, out of the movie, there, there's probably, if you really went through Scream 2, there's probably, you know, 15 minutes you probably could have cut out and made that movie so much more fluid. Because it was, again, it was there was a lot of just slow moments, right, that you could have sped up. But the film was just so well done and executed and the, the moments that mattered still mattered. And so it was, it, it, it kind of made up and you were able to look past it, Right. Well, Scream 5, it it had the right approach, in my opinion, of just, like, the faster pace and the more brutal... Because Scream has always been pretty brutal, considering the times, right? Like, they wanted to give 96 an X rating. Like, they had to cut a bunch of that movie out in order to get it just to an R rating, and still it was kind of on the fence teetering. Like, they didn't know if they were going to get it. So, you know, it's always been this sort of dark movie, but we're in a different time, right? And we're in just a different climate. So it's nice to, to kind of see that that modern take on it. I just think, like, if you, if you just could keep that modern take that they established in 5 and 6, translate that to Scream 7, give us a fresh story with some quality writing, I think you'd have about as close to a perfect movie again as you could have. Right? I don't think you need to go this crazy outside of the box. But it's just, it's funny that like these things just keep getting highlighted with, with the writing. Again, I'm sure that this is kind of more ton in cheek but just something worth highlighting. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel about this? Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments. That being said, if you haven't liked the video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Helps me to enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, follow the bell notification, stay up to date with all things Scream, join this wonderful community, and all of our discussions. See you all in the next one. Thank you.